criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain that this nation under god shall have a new birth of freedom freedom and that government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yeah. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. And so let freedom ring. Let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Well, I was approached by uh, uh, Jeff Barron, who is the victim of, uh, of these horrible crimes in our court system. I was approached by Jeff and his, his family uh, after they had read some things that I, uh, that I had written about another case uh, in South Texas that I was involved in where we had gotten rid of a KKK-affiliated Democrat judge there. It was, uh, it was cartoonish almost, uh, but it was a real situation I had been involved with. And Jeff uh, thought that that was probably some credible experience. Uh, and it turns out there was instant synergy. He needed help. Uh, some fe people who were covering it previously had turned on him. Uh, very tragic that when that happens, when you have media that know the truth, that suddenly flip and uh, stop doing their job. Well, that had happened to Jeff. So I, I instantaneously just kind of felt uh, motivated to take a look. And the more I looked, the more was there. I am a civil liberties purist. I, I believe that the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is the most important amendment after free speech. And that's because it guarantees our right to privacy. I don't mean the one that they invented in the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling where we said abortion is a right to privacy. I don't mean that one. I mean that we have a fundamental right to be secure in our persons, papers, and effects against all unreasonable search and seizure, except upon probable cause when a warrant shall issue. None of these conditions were met in Jeff's case. It was civil. That's the really amazing thing. This is civil stuff. He's being treated like a criminal, but the language of civil process was used to accomplish a virtual, uh, you know, uh, gosh, we would call it uh, house arrest situation. Everything but the ankle bracelet. 
And all of it was done by taking his wealth, by using procedures that are meant for people or companies who are in bad financial standing, none of which Jeff was, to, in, to make his wealth and his personhood the property of this court and this system. And it's, it's the first person, to my knowledge, uh, that has been really a, a slave, at least in the sense that their property is not theirs and that they are unable to even get a, a CAT scan without permission from a fiduciary authority. This is slavery, right? So he's the first person to experience 21st century United States slavery since 1865. And that's what drew me, is how could this happen? How on God's green earth, in the U.S. court system, could a citizen be told, as Jeff was, you don't even have the right to an attorney. And worse, when you had attorneys, you're using them too much. It's, how could I pass it up? Uh, if, if it were merely for selfish reasons, it's the story of a lifetime. It's also wrong for anyone to look the other way because we're next. This is a test case. We know how those go. Uh, ten years from now, there will be ten Jeffs, twenty Jeffs, thirty Jeffs. And, uh, you know, it starts here and we now have to finish it here. Okay. Tom DeLay is a, is a friend and someone who uh, I've gotten to know uh, in the second half of his, his life and career. Uh, after he was no longer the hammer and after the Travis County uh, predatory legal system had destroyed his, his wealth, his family, his life, uh, all for a law that apparently did not exist. Okay. Well, this isn't about Tom, but Tom's important because what happened to Tom is very comparable to the kind of black hole legal nightmare, twilight zone even, that happened to Jeff. So Tom commiserated. He immediately saw the imprint of this same kind of psychosis uh, on the bench, and he went after it. He lent his name to a few very key statements that to this day we've still been able to credibly use for Jeff and about Jeff that are straight from, from his mouth. And uh, frankly, the precedent that's been established here with cases like Tom and cases like Jeff is that the law is situational and it's dependent. Uh, you know, your rights are no longer firm. They are dependent on whether or not the judge likes you. Now, that is, uh, my friend, I mean, that's, that's dangerous. That is Soviet Union territory. In justifies the means was the root of the worst human rights violations in history. They didn't get there overnight. They took little baby steps. We're taking a big step with Jeff. So what comes after Jeff? That's the most disturbing and concerning thing to me is if Jeff is this bad off and the judges have been able to violate his first, his fourth, his right to an attorney, <laughs> an attorney for crying out loud. Uh, we hate attorneys. Who wouldn't want to protect her? I mean, it's almost kind of not helping him. In fact, every attorney he's had has gone over to the other side. So, I mean, the idea that he, that, that most basic, essential, throwaway caveat, uh, that that is something he was denied by these folks. Where will it go next? Uh, and this is very, this is actually ironic. Uh, Joe Biden's attorney, uh, I won't name him in this interview, is, is a mutual friend of several of my friends in politics, especially in Texas, everybody knows everybody. And I had the occasion to meet and talk with this man. He's an attorney several times. Okay, you think an attorney could defend themselves, especially if they're at that level. You wouldn't think they even had to worry. Well, the same or similar things, I should say, through bankruptcy court were done to this man's business, uh, still being done, this man's business. And it's, this, it's a similar dy dynamic. It's out of Dallas, go figure. Uh, common denominator there. And these things that are being done are being done in group succession. One thing leads to another. It's almost like uh, uh, Looney Tunes. We grew up with Looney Tunes cartoons back before those were dangerous to children and offensive. Okay? Looney Tunes had this one thing with Bugs Bunny where he'd go, don't cross this line. Then he'd cross it. And don't cross this line. Cross that. Okay, well, that's what you're seeing with the court system in Dallas. They go, can we get away with this? Okay, can we get away with that? And they're doing it aggressively like a train uh, with no brakes. So I call this trickle-down lawlessness, and I have since Obama, because his DOJ changes and everything he did, 
uh, Eric Holder saying that uh, that you know Black Panthers can uh, intimidate voters that that's okay whatever uh, Eric Holder sending untraced guns to Mexico that were later used on our border ranges and innocent civilians uh, there was no point just sending guns to Mexico this is a lawless system and it's a system that won't recover from its its uh, drinking binge uh, very fast it takes time to pull all of these cultural changes out of something so, you know we uh, as a believer I don't I don't know if everyone watching this uh, believes as I do but as a Christian I believe that uh, you know it's very easy for sin for wrong for bad to spread and proliferate it's very hard once it has to extract people from that and to pull the system back almost never do we see uh, something go all the way back to where it was? Uh, once innocence is lost, it's lost. So, we, in a sense, we lost uh, our, our remaining uh, dignity uh, in the last eight years. And this trickle-down lawlessness dynamic has created something that is kind of beyond uh, any individual citizen or even group of citizens' ability to handle and we have to recognize that before we can do anything. A sitting federal judge uh, who has two pensions okay, from taxpayer funded uh, entities, one from his time on the bench, the other from uh, a university uh, in this part of the state actually. Um, law school, uh, he's the dean. Uh, it's kind of interesting to have a judge uh, who, uh, who treats the law like he did uh, like a five dollar uh, prostitute you know the, that that man is now the dean of a law school it's beyond me but that's a focus this judge threatened to use the military the marshals which he actually used to haunt Jeff's mother an old woman okay uh, marshals visited their door okay a man who threatened things far beyond the legitimate powers of his office abused his standing as a federal judge to get Jeff's money. Now, what do I mean by that? How does a judge get money? It's a little hard to explain. Well, court court budgets, okay, court fees. Whenever you go to court, you pay the court, okay. Well, Jeff had a lot of money in a juvenile diabetes trust fund. That's point two. Something that was going to help children. Legit this is not a Bill Gates nonprofit. You know, it's like, I gave away half my money, and, you know, it's his nonprofit. It's not that. This is a legitimate thing. Expenditures are there. You can show that what Jeff was doing was, was about helping kids. And you, ha <clears throat> you have this, this guy, this judge, uh, appointed by, by William Jefferson Clinton, who just decided, as he put it in his own words, apparently there's a lot of money to be had here, quote, unquote. Now, there's no way context helps that, especially when you know that the ruling that ended up seizing Jeff's assets uh, was backdated and took place without his presence. Uh, ex parte communications resulted in a hearing that he never was given a notice to attend. Uh, uh, this, is, this is criminal, obviously, but it's so beyond criminal. It's, it's beyond Capone. Capone would look at this judge and go, Man, that's messed up. That is where we are. That's the territory we're in. It's beyond, uh, it's beyond uh, even what organized crime looked like in the 30s. So that's what we have to really see. Now, number three is destruction of evidence and immunity. Judges that were either related to Judge Walker, sorry, not Judge Walker, uh, Ferguson, Freudian slip. Uh, Walker is a, a man in uh, Beaumont. Uh, one of the last KKK affiliated judges, he's gone. We got rid of him. But uh, Judge Ferguson, similar MO. And Ferguson's biggest thing here is the fact that he had friends that came after. Friends that still harassed Jeff from the bench. Friends that declared immunity for all the attorneys involved that had touched Jeff's money at any time. And then proceeded to order the destruction and or locking up of all evidence against the law, but when, when has that mattered so far, uh, so that Jeff cannot see or prove where the money went and where it was spent so that he can actually counter these, these, uh, these criminals in court.
Okay, so the destruction of evidence and the locking up of evidence is a major crime. I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's a felony. And if it's not a felony, it darn well should be. But this is a crime, plain and simple. These people have not been held to account. And forget the judges. Forget the judges, Reggie. Uh, the judges would be great to, it would be great to impeach judges. We don't do that very often in our system, even though we can. What's a realistic goal for guys like Jeff? The lawyers. The lawyers should lose everything. They should be disbarred. They should pay the fines requisite to the crime they committed, to the improper allocation and distribution of resources they were charged with paying limited debts with and then restituting Jeff. They, they never restituted Jeff's resources. So he was entitled to some sort of restitution by this judge. None of that ever took place. They spent it all. Those people were given immunity by the courts. That's who I want to pay because they're gettable. And that's where we have to focus. So those three areas, the evidence, the judge, I'll send the marshals after you, you know, in print. Uh, and then of course, this system. And that's gotta change uh, it happening. And he didn't take any steps to remedy the, uh, the immense <laughs> loss of, uh, of uh, income and, uh, and money, uh, property here that we're, that we're benefiting illegally from someone else's stuff. Uh, it, think of it like a, a uh, kind of an estate sale, but you're alive and you're in the bedroom and you're going, what the hell's going on? I don't know if we can say hell. Uh, um, what the heck is going on? And you're still in the house. I'm still alive. I'm here. Okay. Well, Jeff is, I'm still alive. I'm here. They're still spending his money. They're still finding a way to milk Jeff for everything he's got left. When I start sounding like Pat Robertson, and, 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 and you know, and the gays and the, yeah, please. <laughs> please, we need to get rid of Pat while he's still, just put Pat in a home where he thinks he's doing CBN. Give him, the, give him the full set and go, Pat, you're on in five, you know? And, and just let him talk to the wall. Because I love Pat. Pat, Pat was a force for good, okay? He's not always wrong. He's just uh, retarded uh, at this point. He, he doesn't have that thing he had when he was younger where he knows, I shouldn't say this on TV, you know? He says it anyway. He's loose. He's too loose. He's he's feeling he's good. The Holy Spirit, right. Uh, that's that's why but Baptists. Has a sermon for that too. That's why I became a Presbyterian for a few years because they had an ending. Um, <laughs> Baptists they feel the Spirit. They don't have an exit line, so they have to spend 30, 20 minutes searching for the exit line, and then they land. <laughs> Presbyterians, we're out at twelve. We're if you're if you're not done, we're leaving. You know. Okay, guys. Okay. All right, back on track. Okay, this is sort of the other than, you know, and I'll let you, if you want to add to this, but what, would, what sort of... Monster. <laughs> Give him help. Give Jeff resources. Help him fight. Uh, treat this like uh, Martin Niemöller was the man who famously coined uh, the phrase, first they came for the socialists, but I was not a socialist, so I did nothing, etc. Uh, and so on until, you know, then they came for the Jews. Then they came for the Christians, but there was nobody left, you know. Uh, that, is, that is what this is. It's a modern-day version of that. Now, we're not in camps. We're not gassing people yet. But if you can take away someone's rights and go, huh, that was easy, and there's no consequence, none. A brick doesn't fly in your window. You know, Black Lives Matter doesn't show up on your lawn. Nothing happens. There's a problem with that. What happened to Jeff that really, really just... Uh, essentially broke the bank for me was that not only were these things done and he had to spend years fighting just to get the Fifth Circuit which is more sane than most circuit appeals courts to say yeah that's bad it's unconstitutional remand and they did what the circuits do they sent the, the case back they said fix this give the man his money okay give the man his stuff back let him have a lawyer. Okay? They essentially tried to reverse this decision. 
But uh, as Andrew Jackson famously said, as president, paraphrasing, okay, you've made the decision, now let's see you enforce it, all right? These courts don't really have uh, the ability at that level to send, except in the case of Ferguson's deranged mind, to send troops to enforce these things. These are executive, these are executive issues. So in Jeff's case, not only did he have to deal with the initial loss of his property, his, uh, his credibility, this affected his business unfairly, obviously, but it affected his entire life. There's no normal after this. You never are the same person ever again. Even if you get Jesus, and Jesus is great to have in this case, but, but this is not something that gets fixed. It is a permanent, lifelong scar, and it's not fair, and it's certainly evil, and it's wrong. But not only did Jeff have to deal with the initial wound, Jeff also had to deal with the fact that these guys didn't comply with the reversal. In fact, they still aren't complying with it. They're in process. And by in process, I mean they're spending everything they can before that someone makes them stop spending it. And with interest-bearing accounts like his, they're able to kind of stay just behind uh, the uh, kind of the, the curtain call. So that money is continuing to be a cash cow for men who should be in prison. Uh, and according to what I understand legally in this, in this situation, uh, many, many could be and should be. And uh, I, I would love to see that. So uh, what's happened now after Ferguson, uh, the man who, who said, uh, you know, don't you know who I am, what I can do to you? I'm a federal judge. I can kill you. I can send the marshals to... You know, it sounded like Boss Hogg. If, if, remember that show? When we were kids, we used to watch this show called Dukes of Hazard. And, and uh, for, the, for the people watching, and Dukes of Hazard obviously is a show, but if it were any closer to that, um, you know, pinch me, because it was Boss Hogg. As I was reading this transcript, every caricature of a corrupt judge in movies growing up, this was it. It was the epitome of a southern corrupt uh, Dixie crap. Uh, and to define Dixiecrat, these are the Democrats who actually tried to stop the Civil Rights Act and uh, built those statues. In any case, Jeff is still a victim. He is still being victimized. He still doesn't have his money. He still doesn't have... If Jeff got a heart attack tomorrow, he would have to ask permission by default because they're not done complying with the reversal. Uh, he'd have to, by default, ask permission to go get treated. This is the United States of America. This sounds more like the Soviet Union. And frankly, Jeff is not an apparatchik in this scenario. He's not Gorbachev in the back of the car. You know, uh, this is not a scenario that any American citizen should ever have to experience, much less twice after it's been declared unconstitutional. So where's Jeff now? Well, the Fifth Circuit has ruled again. This time they said, sorry, not sorry. You walk into this room at your own risk because it leads to the future. Not a future that will be, but one that might be. This is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in the old one. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted the ripping imprint of a boot on the pages of history since the beginning of time. It has refinements, technological advances, and a more sophisticated approach to the destruction of human freedom. But like every one of the super states that preceded it, it has one iron rule. Logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. Any state, any entity, any ideology that fails to recognize the worth, the dignity, the rights of man, that state is obsolete. A case to be filed under M for Mankind in the Twilight Zone. Oh, freedom, 
once they come to light, they're right here. You just have to see them again. 